All right, decided to go for a little evening walk tonight, which I should do more often because I put on a few pounds this winter. But um, I wanted to talk about uh, a gig that I did today and some thoughts that I have on that. Today, I played a nursing home. And um, I think that nursing home gig is a really good gig for people who are... Let's say you, you're you're like up and coming, in like let's say you, no, you're you're just looking to try to get your first gigs as a solo act. Maybe you're an acoustic guitar player, or uh, you know you're a keyboard player and whatnot, and you're just looking to get your first gig, get your feet wet, and you can't really you can't really call a venue up out of the clear blue and just say hey you know book me I want to get I want to play your venue they might they might not hire you because they don't know you they don't know anything about you yet and um, so a nursing home quite often they're looking for people to come entertain some of the elderly and sick people who don't really have you know much in the way of entertainment coming their way Okay, so it's a good way to get your first gig. This guy's walking his dog. What's going on? <laughs> it's also a great place for you to work on, you know, new material, okay? Not to say like that because these people are old and sometimes they're a little bit, quite frankly, sometimes they're, they're out of it, you know, and they're not quite sure what's going on um you know what but it's a good they're still living breathing people and they'll they will give you feedback and it's a good place where you don't have to worry so much about the consequences where you could work out new material on on a test audience because there's nothing like playing new material in front of actual living breathing people to to kind of get it out of your system for the first time. You could practice in your house till you're blue in the face, but it's not until you play it in front of real people that you really get to see how it's gonna go over. Another thing that's great about nursing home type gigs is the fact that they do pay, okay? They may not pay a lot, but they also tend to be during the earlier hours of the day and during the week which means they don't interfere with your regular gig schedule let's say you are a gigging musician and you're doing the typical Friday night Saturday night you know Sunday brunch uh, you know you're doing the typical evening gigs well the nursing home gigs you know they're not you're not they're not gonna be at at nine o'clock on a Saturday night they're just not um, so it's a good way if you're let's say you're a full-time musician it's a good way to fill in some of those quiet times in your schedule like me for example Mondays Tuesdays Wednesdays I oftentimes wish that I could you know yeah you can give a few guitar lessons here and there and whatnot but quick little hundred fifty dollar or hundred to two hundred dollar nursing home gig you get to do a good deed for society, right? You get to practice material. And you get to make a little bit extra money. And if you do it with an honest heart and a, and a good vibe, they're going to have you back. Because these places are hungry for people to just come in there and spread a little joy. You have to remember, oftentimes the people in these nursing homes are, they're like the forgotten, the forgotten members of society, you know? A lot of times, they, some of them don't have children, they don't have anybody to come visit them, and they just sit there day in and day out, and they do the same thing every day. Could you imagine how maddening that would be? So, somebody who comes in there, you're young, at least compared to them, you kind of spread a little cheer, a little joy. 
a little change of pace to these people who, you know, oftentimes don't have much to look forward to. How you doing? And it's a really good, it's a really uh, positive and good thing to put out there into the world. And you'll feel good about it, I guarantee, when the gig is over. So as far as equipment you'll need, I mean, your basic setup, you don't need anything special. Today I, I go out with my Fishman Solo amp, which is just a small, kind of, sits on one, one tripod kind of stand. Just a basic Fishman Solo amp, or PA, small PA. My mic stand, and my guitar, and I just plug in. Uh, as far as material goes, well, for, depending on your age, when I was younger and I would play in the nursing homes, you know, it would be a lot of like, can you play Patsy Cline? Could you play music from the 40s, 50s, uh, you know, even the 30s? I didn't know any of that stuff. My musical uh, journey pretty much starts in the 60s, you know, with the Beatles. And, but, so you try to find some of the older material that you think they might like. I did a little Etta James. Um, you know, you could do some stuff like that, but even if you can't, you know, anything that's a kind of a, a light-hearted song, any kind of Beatles music, Here Comes the Sun, stuff like that, you really can't go too far wrong with anything like that. And you find that these people, they know a lot more music than you think they do, okay? Um, the other thing is, as I've gotten older, so the people in the nursing homes now, you know, they could be in their late 60s, or early 70s, and they know a lot of the, the music from that era. Beatles, James Taylor, Simon and Garfunkel, um, and any popular music that would play on the radio alongside those other artists. So that opens you up to Billy Joel, you know, even Tom Petty and stuff, Bob Dylan. Think of artists whose songs have been covered a lot. So you get into Bob Dylan, Carol King, so they'll, they might know the artists that covered that material, or, you know, because it's, they're such popular songs, so you kind of eliminate that difference in age between you and them, just by picking popular songs. But that goes with any kind of cover gig that you might have, right? So today, for example, I, I I set up my fishman, the gig was at 2 o'clock, I uh, got there early, always get there early, it just, you, it shows that you care, okay, it goes for any gig or any business setup, any kind of business arrangement, you should always be early, show them that you are serious about it, and that you're taking this gig seriously, you're not just doing it like, oh, fuck these old people, I don't care, no, you give them what they deserve, okay, they deserve it more than anybody. So, what do I do? I get there about 1 o'clock, greet everybody nicely, set up. They'll be sitting in that room waiting for you. You're going to have a room full of people, you know, looking at you. All of them today in wheelchairs. Some of them, you know, I would brought the camera today because I wanted to video the gig. But that wound up not happening because there was a woman who, a few women, but one in particular who kind of had, you know, probably some kind of dementia and she was making loud noises the whole time. There's going to be distractions. That's another good thing about these gigs is they're going to force you to have to block out distractions and when you're performing, that's something you often have to do. If you're playing in a noisy venue or there's just some jerk in the audience that doesn't shut up and you can hear them and it's distracting to you, well, if you're playing around people who, you know, might have some little mental type things going on, that could be a little bit uncomfortable. Well, it forces you to get into your zone and overcome it. The other thing is, music is very powerful as a healer. Oftentimes, when you perform for these people and they seem a little agitated at first, I found many times, especially in the children's hospitals, but when you're playing, it will tend to calm these people down. And that is a really special 
thing to be able to do. That's what makes music so therapeutic. So I set up, I said hello to everybody. I made a little joke about how did my hair come out today. And some of them got it. Some of them, I don't know what, you know, if they were there, all there or not. And um, I just started with some James Taylor stuff that I thought they might know. Oh, we got some motorcycle guys here. Some young punks cruising around the hood. Um, so, you know, like I said, I went with some songs that I thought they would know. Some James Taylor. I played some Carole King. I played some Beatles, like Here Comes the Sun. Things like that. And, you know, people knew it. People loved it. Then there was some uh, some some hippie looking guys out there, so they asked me if I could play any. Uh, what did they ask? I forgot what it was, but I wound up playing some Bob Dylan, some like uh, Blowing in the Wind, music that everybody knows, you know. And um, it's supposed to end at three, but I played a little bit longer. Why not, right? Not like I had anything really special to do so you play it's at 315 you stick around afterwards because they're gonna to want to talk to you remember something they don't get to interact a lot of times with with people so pay them a little attention you know the people who run the entertainment there they're gonna notice this and you're gonna get called back to play again and um, I don't know I came home feeling good I felt like I did, did a good deed, made a little bit of money. Okay, let's face it, we all, need, we all need money. So it's good to do it for charity too, but if you're starting out, or even if you're not starting out, because I'm not starting out, I'm doing this almost 30, you know, 25, 30 years now. But it's a good place to work on yourself, to do something good for your soul, for other people. And if you're starting out, it's a good place for you to get some gigs, build some goodwill out there in the world. Nursing homes, don't rule them out. Please like and subscribe. I'm Frank Persico. This is a little different format for me today. And damn, my shoulder hurts from holding this camera up the whole time. And it's not even that big of a camera. It's just a little Sony ZV-1, but I'm going to have to work on my shoulders. Have a good one, everybody. Take care.